So today is going to be a big episode. Well, I think I say that every time. But this episode, I'm going to work on some stuff around my base, maybe work on some farms and some other stuff. So as you can tell, this is my base at the moment. I'm in the middle of a forest. You can see the pathways and some buildings. But the first thing I'm going to be doing is actually shearing as much of these trees as possible and basically getting the wood. I am really low on wood, so this will help me with both my landscaping and building some more of my base. quite a while to clear all of that forest so unfortunately shears don't have that much durability so I had to keep stopping and going over to the village and doing some villager trading or down to the XP grinder but you can see I got tons of leaves I have so many leaves that I probably won't have to worry about them probably ever again in this world unless I really use a lot of them and you can see I have a good amount of wood too. So after clearing all of that, I have a lot better idea of the landscape or the terrain. You can see that there's different levels. The terrain kind of goes up so I can build stuff at different levels and it'll give it a nice level of depth when you look at all the buildings. There's a giant gap there into the cave. There's a random hole here, down here. And you can see there's random spots where there's caves, so I'm going to have to fill in that stuff. And this extends all the way out over there, and I can build some stuff along here and into there. So I have tons of space to work with. It's just going to be smoothing out the terrain. So, well, not smoothing it. I don't want to make it completely flat. But even though 1.18 has better terrain than before, it still has some weird spots. So the next thing I want to do is some mapping. So I've only done a 3x2 area, which is only really around my base and a bit around the area. So what I'm planning on doing with the map is this. This is going to be a giant map, and I'm going to build something around this. So I've already crafted all of the item frames because I have been grinding off screen, basically breeding cows and getting the leather from them. But I haven't got enough maps yet. I only have 43 empty maps. So what I'm going to do is part of this mapping. What I'm looking for specifically is a Badlands biome. So Badlands I want to grab because if I can get some terracotta, I want to use that in my building uh, to build stuff. So it would be good to find a biome with that so I can get a bunch of it. But what I'm going to do, so I have one of the maps right here, which is around that mountain and the top of my base and what I'm going to do is head in that direction over there and basically do let's see one two three six more maps and see how much stuff I can get out of that so I'm just a little off the map so I should be able to do the next one looks pretty good it's starting to get dark so I should probably get the bed so I just realized this is probably a bad way to actually find the Badlands because I know what is south of here and it is mostly dark oak forest. So what might be a better idea. So tag is over here. I know there's tag over there. There'll be dark forest and jungle over that way. It might be just a good idea to head in one direction with Elytra and try to see what I can find. Basically what I'm looking for is either savanna, desert, or Badlands biome. So if I can find one of those, I might be able to find a Badlands biome. Okay, let's head off and see what we can find. So probably the best way would be head in this direction. What is that thing? Is that what I think it is? Um, hmm. This kind of looks like an ocean ruin, but it's on land. So this was where I was earlier with the jungle and this was a beach oh there we go there's some savanna that's a good sign so if we can just find some other drier biomes so just to explain how 
biome clusters work basically there are certain biomes that group together so with with the biomes like a savanna they cluster close to deserts and also badlands so if you can actually notice these changes it helps you to actually find specific biomes so if you want to find something like a desert if you see a savanna that's a good sign that a desert is close by or bordering that biome and this isn't a good sign that I'm in a birch forest now. Oh, there we go. So we finally found a Badlands just past the jungle. So we're definitely going to have to set up another portal here. Is this all of it? So there's a desert over there. Probably should just look around and see what this looks like around here. Kind of curious about the new badlands biome and how it looks so that looks good there is what is that called the wooded badlands so looks like I can get tons of terracotta and sand from this area just got to figure out where to put the portal so there I set up the nether portal so I can get over here I also noticed that there is an azalea tree right there, so there's a lush cave biome below. There's also one there randomly in the middle of the desert too. So now I'm just going to head back to my base and try to connect this to my other nether portals. Well that's interesting, there is a mushroom island right here. So if I want any mushrooms, or there's a wandering trader here, I can just head back to here. By the way, I do plan on finishing this map building. But right now it doesn't really make a lot of sense to do that until I got all the maps or I have the time to do it. So now that I have found a Badlands, let's head into the nether. My next plan is to fix my nether portals because right now they are all over the place. There's one that heads out to the stronghold there. I think there's one over there that goes all the way over to the nether fortress. And the easy solution to that is to put all my nether portals on the nether ceiling. So let's see if I remember how to do this. So you have to have a ladder, you have to have an ender pearl, and I believe you have to be above, I think it's 120. Let's look, 124. So will this work? There we go. So I am on the nether ceiling. You can tell it is still the basalt delta. So what I'm gonna do is put a portal down. Did I bring all my stuff? Yes. Ooh, that would have sucked if I didn't. So let's put down another portal in here and let's see if it connects. So I'm gonna move it a bit away from where I was so that it doesn't connect to the same portal. And let's see if this works. So I am in a forest. Looks like I'm up on, oh, I know where I am. I'm over the hill a bit because my base should be right where would my base be I think my base is here yes it is so we have another portal on the ceiling so now I can connect all the stuff a lot easier so now when I want to get to somewhere in the nether all I have to do is fly with my elytra and it'll be a lot quicker than if I just walked through the nether Okay, let's head back to the nether. Now let's see if I can actually do math properly. And yes, I can. So right now I only have, I think, four nether portals, which is to my base, to a stronghold, nether fortress, and to the badlands. So basically I'll connect all those and set up the nether portal off screen and show you guys the results when I'm done. Because some of this stuff is a bit monotonous. I'm not sure you guys want to watch it. So the so next thing I want to work on is this granite monstrosity right here. It would be nice if the rain stopped so I could record. But this is where I have my elevator. It hasn't been built because I didn't have enough sand and glass. But now I do. So what I want to do is just finish that. Connect it from down there up to here. So it'll make it a lot easier for me to head down to the caves. Now to put the finishing touches on this, so 
You put the signs on the side. You put the water up here. You put the water up there. Just make sure to grab some extra stuff. So the kelp and the soul sand and magma blocks. And I really gotta spruce this up. It kind of looks a little bland right now. Needs some variety of blocks. So in order to make this all source blocks, because right now it's just flowing water, we have to place the kelp. So hopefully I can do this quick enough so I don't drown in this. And it is done. So there is the elevator. You can see one is going down. You can see the bubbles going down. And I think that one is going up. Yeah, you can see the bubbles up there. And let's just check that this works. So Raj goes down and Raj goes up. The other thing I want to do is once I actually get some blocks and some colors specifically, I want to make a pattern so it looks kind of cool when I go up and down. You know, just to kill a little time. So now that I'm done the elevator, on to the pumpkin farm. So first of all, I want to deconstruct this tough and deep slate look. It's not really working for me. And eventually I want to do something a little more vibrant and colorful. But first I just want to get rid of that. And this thing is not producing as much pumpkin as I want. So it's got four stacks, which is pretty decent. But what I want to do is because I didn't have melons in here before, I want to put melons in between the pumpkins because that increases the growth of both. Basically they grow quicker when it's a checkerboard and half of it is melon seeds and half of it is pumpkin seeds. So I want to do that. And I don't think I have enough resources right now to actually add a layer. I wanted to basically double this farm, but I don't think I can do that right now. So I just plan on making that change. And unfortunately to do that, I have to pretty much remove all of that and rebuild it again. So let's get started. <laughs> and melon farm is complete you can see i've added some blocks aesthetically to make it a little nicer shall we say while this has been producing just to see how it works so let's see how much is in here it's a decent amount not nothing crazy i just emptied it also so uh definitely the adding the melon uh, stems to this has really increased the growth rates the other thing i should mention just to show you the changes is that one thing I noticed is the minecart was completely full and it wasn't emptying items into here. So before I just had a powered rail so it would just drop some of it into there. But it didn't have enough time to actually completely empty it. So what I did was added a circuit over here. I'll just show you quickly. So there is the powered rail is on top of here. This is the hopper. You can see items right now are filtering through. So it's probably being pushed to here. Well, now it's empty, but this comparator is basically uh, measuring how many items are in here. So when there's an item in here, this comparator turns on, powers this block. There's a redstone torch here. So when this block is powered, it inverts the signal and turns it off. This block is powered. So then there is the repeater and then it powers that and powers the powered rail. So basically what happens to simplify this a little easier than what I just said, is that when there when there is items in here it basically turns it off and then when it is completely empty it sends a signal through this that powers the rail and then the minecart is pushed off so basically this allows for the minecart to be completely emptied of all of its items and then for it to eventually be powered and pushed off so this is a lot more efficient and works a lot better than before Another thing I did was work on my nether portal. So I moved them to a more central spot right here. So you can see right now I am on the nether ceiling and I have put in a bunch of nether portals. So that one over there, I believe that's the village. That's where my spawn point is, where the world starts. And then I believe that one's the creeper farm. But you can see I put wool all the way down and you can see I put signs in to make it a lot easier for me to see where they are. 
and it goes all the way down to the Badlands one I have over there. There's one to the Stronghold. So basically connects everything up and makes it a lot easier. The great thing about the nether ceiling is that no mobs will spawn up here unless you make a mistake. So basically that's why I put carpet down because mobs cannot spawn on carpet. And there is a weird pig that's over here that went through the portal. But besides that, there shouldn't be any mobs up here. And the next thing I want to do to end this video is work on this. So this is going to take a while, but I think it'll look pretty cool in a time lapse. So basically I want to map out all this area. I have all the item frames and I also have, if it's over here somewhere, but basically I have all of the maps to fill this now. So this is going to take quite a while because I'm going to have to go to each individual spot and map it out and make sure it lines up properly with this map. And I will probably make some mistakes in the process because, well, mistakes happen. So anyways, let's get started and see how this mapping works out. finished map so this is 15 by 15 you can see a lot of definition in here so you can see where my base is you can see where the village is over here you can also see the creeper farm over there now one of the tiles on here so one of these maps is equivalent to 128 by 128 blocks so basically each pixel of the map represents one block now you can expand the maps out so that the one map can show a larger area so the most you can expand it out to is 2048 by 2048. So basically it'll merge a bunch of the blocks into one. So to give you an idea how big of an area that would be, this entire map is one less. So if it was 16 by 16 instead of 15 by 15, that would be the maximum expanded amount that you could put in one tile. So this shows a lot more in this. So this gives you a good idea of the area. And you can see I've been working on some stuff off screen over here also. So I think that is enough for today. So you can see I've been framing out some areas. This is going to be my villager trading hall is going to be over here. My storage system is going to be over here. My map building is going to be over here. And I've been expanding the walkways. So I think for my next episode, I'm going to be doing something a bit bigger. I think I'm going to try to kill the wither. But thank you guys for watching.